As if one national trauma weren't enough, the FBI is now warning of more potential turmoil to come. The Bureau today is saying it has received information indicating, quote, armed protests, unquote, are being planned at all 50 state capitals and the U.S. Capitol in Washington in the days leading up to Inauguration Day. The news comes as security measures are being stepped up ahead of the event. And, of course, adding to the mix, the man in charge of the Department of Homeland Security has just stepped down. Joining us with the latest, CNN Shimon Prokupes. So what does this FBI bulletin say? Yeah, it's a very really serious time right now, Anderson. You know, all across the country, threats facing uh, almost every state and city across the country. And so the FBI uh, gathered a lot of information, a lot of it that they're seeing online and social media. And so they put out this bulletin. They're trying to avoid some of the mistakes uh, that we saw at the Capitol. And so they're warning law enforcement across the country that more protests are coming. And as you said, one of the things they're warning is that there could be armed protests. Uh, they believe believe there are armed protests planned uh, for January 16th through the 20th. They're saying that uh, groups are calling uh, for storming the government buildings, such as courthouses uh, and other government buildings. They're also threatening up an uprising if the president was removed uh, before his supposed last day of office. Uh, and of course, there are also threats against the incoming president, against Biden and against the, the vice president, Kamala Harris. All of this very concerning uh, for the FBI. So they put this together in this bulletin that they sent out to all law enforcement uh, across the country, Anderson. And we know following last week's attacks uh, on the Capitol that officials are now calling up additional security for the inauguration. Do we know the plan? Yeah, so certainly National Guard uh, in Washington, D.C. We'll, we'll see extra National Guard. Also, uh, the Secret Service, uh, the now resigning uh, Homeland Security, acting Homeland Security chief, uh, he ordered that the inauguration a week early for it to be called a national security event. So they are doing that. And also we're going to see there's going to be extra Secret Service, extra police certainly here in Washington, D.C., but also all across the country at capitals and at government buildings, you're going to see extra security. This is a very much a real threat that a lot of people are really concerned about, and they're trying to avoid some of the mistakes uh, that they saw last week. They just didn't take it seriously enough, Anderson, and it seems now that authorities are going to be doing that. Yeah, uh, let's hope so. Shimon Prokupes, appreciate it. Joining us now, CNN law enforcement analyst and former Secret Service agent Jonathan Wackrow, CNN chief political analyst Gloria Borger, and another CNN law enforcement analyst, former Washington, D.C., police chief Charles Ramsey. Gloria, Chad Wolf, just the latest cabinet secretary to resign. What's the impact on that during, you know, one of the most fraught security situations in Washington's history? I don't think we know yet, Anderson. I mean, this is the former head of the Department of Homeland Security. We are in the midst of a national crisis here and an emergency so severe that the FBI is sending out uh, warnings that you just spoke with Shimon about. And I think psychologically that affects every person, not only living in Washington, D.C., not only the people whose lives were threatened uh, in the government and the United States Capitol, but all over the country when you hear that your elected officials, your hearts of government are going to be under attack. And so when you don't have the head of Homeland Security there and he's handed it over to the head of emergency management, um, every I think the, the logical question to ask is who's piloting the plane here? Who's going to make sure that there is a peaceful transfer of power? And can that actually occur? And, mm. you know, there is a sense asleep at the switch. Yeah. What can you do about it? Chief Ramsey, uh, former FBI acting director Andrew McKay was on CNN earlier and said the bulletin from the Bureau warning of, the, of armed protests is really quite extraordinary in its scope and its specificity. How concerned are you? Well, I'm very concerned. I had heard um, about a week ago that January 17th had been targeted for a uh, so-called Second Amendment rally which is just, in my opinion, cover for something like what you saw Wednesday. And it's going to occur not only in Washington, D.C., but all the capitals across the United States, 50 capitals. So that obviously is of great concern. All you have to do is remember what happened in Michigan um, not very long ago when they took over the state capitol there, and many of those people were armed. So, yeah, I mean, in light of Wednesday in particular, uh, we have to be very, very concerned. Yeah, I mean, Jonathan, looking back, I mean, that Michigan State House, uh, you know, infiltration, 
you know, was you, you could look at it as kind of a, a test, and it was a test that we failed, and that you know the president encouraged. I mean, the president praised these people who went in with uh, you know rifles and and uh, you know verbally attacked, got in the face of police and legislators in in the state house. Before he resigned, Chad Wolf said he, he instructed the U.S. Secret Service to begin the national special security event operations for, for the inauguration on the 13th instead of the 19th. What does that mean exactly? And, and what do you make of his resignation? So well, I mean, I, 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 first of all, I, I deviate a little bit from Gloria in terms of the, uh, you know, his resignation. I think that his resignation actually has little impact on national, you know, the national security posture, the inauguration security, and DHS's transition into the new administration. Wolf never had developed a long-term strategic plan because he lacked the confirmed leadership. Uh, it often fell into what I refer to as the substitute teacher construct. The acting role uh, really has all the power of a confirmed position but definitely is is not treated so by congress and other employees and in terms of like the uh like how do we move forward non-political and career government employees are really going to carry the mantle for the next week all of the components including the secret service have been self-managing under uh wolf anyway so there really is 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 a little uh you know uh, his departure is sort of a, a a so what matter with a few days left what's important right now and probably the best decision he has made is to move up and accelerate the transition into the national special security event the nssc which is coordinated by the united states secret service and one of the failings that we saw last week on january 6 was a lack of commanding control and intelligence sharing by standing up the nssc structure now we now have a codified command structure with a multi-agency coordinating center, uh, you know, bringing all of these entities together to share intelligence and quickly react to any type of threats that may present themselves. So, can I just yeah, say go, one thing? Yeah, though, that in, in response, he can, when he's gone, he can't vote for the 25th Amendment should have come to that. All these people who are resigning have given up their votes on that one. So let's just remember the impact of that. And Gloria, you know, we, we've been hearing now, you know, more threats against individual members of Congress uh, and that they've continued since yeah. last Wednesday. I just want to play for our viewers some voicemails left from Representative uh, David uh, Cicilline, who's among those leading the calls for impeachment. You poked the bear this time, you little You poked the bear. You understand what I'm saying? You got 80 million people coming after you, you commie little If you impeach him, civil war is on, buddy. First of all, I reject this uh, idiot caller's notion that 80 million people support what happened at the Capitol. I mean, 75 million people or so voted for right. President Trump this last time around. I, I just don't believe that there are 74, 75 million people who support what happened at the Capitol. How, how pres unprecedented is this? I mean, how, how does Washington feel tonight? I think Washington is frightened. I think in many ways it's paralyzed about what's the right thing to do and what can they do with the little time they have. Should they uh, convict, if they impeach the president in the House, should they convict uh, Donald Trump or at least try to convict Donald Trump after Joe Biden is president when they want Joe Biden's cabinet to be confirmed, et cetera, et cetera. I spoke uh, with somebody who had to hide in the Capitol the other day, who was hiding under a desk, who was afraid for his life because he chose to go into uh, some form of public service and work for a senator. And I can only imagine that fear, and I have a hard time thinking about it all across the country. When these people are saying, we're gonna do it again, we're gonna do it again, and the Congress is paralyzed right now about what to do, and I wonder, would they be so paralyzed if this were ISIS, Al-Qaeda, whatever? I, I have a hard time wondering whether they would, because I don't think they would be. And I think they have to do what's right and hold uh, the people accountable who need to be held accountable. And one of those is the President of the United States. Chief Ramsey, I'm from a law enforcement perspective. How do you deal with crowds showing up to state capitals armed. I mean, in some cases, you know, it's it's certainly it's legal to uh, to carry. H how do you deal with that from a law enforcement standpoint? Well, I mean, each uh, state has its own gun laws and it's quite 
uh, permissible in some cases for you to be armed like that. However, I'm sure what they'll do is all the governors are certainly aware state police will be fully activated. Uh, National Guard that hasn't already been sent to Washington, D.C. So they'll establish a hard perimeter around the capitals that they will not allow anyone to cross. And so is it concerning? Yeah, if you've got armed people there, obviously it doesn't take much for this to turn into something very, very bad, which could have easily happened last Wednesday uh, in the capitals. Some of those folks were armed as well. So uh, it, 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 it puts added stress on law enforcement, on, on everybody concerned. Um, I would imagine they'll evacuate uh, the buildings um, once they get wind of the fact that there's a protest coming on. So at least you're not worried about protecting the people. You're just trying to protect the, the, the building itself. Uh, uh, Chief, are you confident law enforcement can handle this? I hope they can. I mean, I can't be 100% confident after last Wednesday. But I really don't think last Wednesday was the norm. I really do think they got caught flat-footed. They weren't paying attention. They didn't have the resources they needed. I don't think it all falls on the shoulders of one individual, Steve Sun, who was the uh, former uh, chief of the uh, Capitol Police. There are a lot of people that got their fingerprints on this failure, believe me. And once they start digging into this, they're going to find out that there are a lot of people that played a role in uh, the Capitol's um, being unprepared to yeah. deal with this. You know, Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan, you know, in the early 70s, there were thousands of bombings, uh, 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 political bombings, mostly from left-wing groups, a lot of them against property. Um, it, it became something that people sort of got used to. That's something we haven't seen in this country for a long time. Are, are you concerned that this is just the beginning of something? Well, I, you know, I, I hope not, Anderson. And, you know, for law enforcement, you know, it's, uh, there's a little bit of an advantage here. And let me explain that. For law enforcement, it's no longer a probability assessment as to the likelihood of violence by these groups. We actually know that these are people who are prepared to engage in domestic terrorism. And unfortunately, they believe in this apocalyptic and revolutionary ideology. So the advantage is that law enforcement actually knows who these groups are. They've been following for them for a long time. They know who the hostile actors are, whether it's QAnon conspiracy theorists, Proud Boys, or Oath Keepers. Law enforcement is actually gonna act very swiftly to contain this threat.